This video is part of a tutorial series that aims to look at the general workflow for working with point cloud data in Open3D. In our last video, we talked about pre-processing point cloud data through desampling and object removal. And in this video, we will be continuing our endeavor to look at different pre-processing techniques in segmentation, such as the use of convex hulls and segmentation using DB scan. Segmentation refers to spatially grouping points with similar properties into homogeneous regions. But why is segmentation important for pre-processing point cloud data? Unlike our human ability to deduce patterns and data and make different observations, sensors lack the ability to mimic our human ability to group sets of elements through grouping objects that are formed by data points that share a pattern. But why is segmentation useful? Excellent question. Firstly, it provides us with the access to manipulate individual contents of a point cloud data through higher level representations known as segments. Also, it allows for processing to be done at segmentations rather than individual point level, making computation more e efficient. Finally, it provides us with the ability to computationally find relationships between different parts of the point cloud, which of course isn't possible by just viewing a point cloud. Hence, through segmentation, we are enabling machines essentially to computationally do what we otherwise take for granted, which is our human ability to understand and navigate our environment. So let's start with convex hulls. What are convex hulls and what are their applications? Convex hulls is the smallest convex polygon that can engulf the set of points in its space. If we have a set of pins as displayed and we would like to snap a rubber band tight around them, the shape the rubber band makes is the convex hull. Convex hulls can be utilized to segment objects from the background in an image. It does that by identifying the outermost points of an object and constructing its convex hull, separating it from its surrounding area. Creating a 3D convex hull from point cloud data can be very useful in a variety of applications. For example, it can be used to represent the boundary of a physical object in 3D space, such as a building or a geological formation. It can also be used to perform collision detection in robotics or to detect defects in industrial parts. So continuing from our last video where we cropped a chair from a point cloud through object removal, let's try finding out how a convex hull of that chair would look like. To compute the convex hull for a point cloud data, Open3D uses compute convex hull. First, we call the compute convex hull method on an object named chair, which is the point cloud that we've created in our previous video. That's just the chair cropped out of the whole point cloud. Then, this function calculates the convex hull of that chair, which represents the minimal convex shape that encloses the whole chair's geometry. And we store that in the variable hull. The convex hull can be assumed as a triangular mesh since it is basically a geometry shape that engulfs the whole chair's geometry. So through assuming that it's a triangular mesh, we can figure out the line set representation of the convex hull of the point cloud of that chair that we've extracted. So what we do is th through using the line set uh, method and the create from triangular mesh, we are figuring out the different lines that can be generated from the edges of the triangular mesh that we have assumed the convex hull to be. And finally, we visualize the chair using Plotly and we get this result. A chair 
with the convex hull lines all around it, engulfing it, and this is representing the whole boundary of the chair. And we did that by assuming that the convex hull would act or look like a triangular mesh. And then through the edges of those triangular meshes, creating th that line set that we see in red. Another popular segmentation clustering method is density-based spatial clustering of applications with noise, or dbscan. If you're interested to learn more, I've linked a great video and a great article in the description. This algorithm groups densely grouped points into clusters or a single cluster where it can identify clusters and large spatial datasets by looking at the local density of those data points. Now, if you've watched those videos or read that article, then you'll understand that we have two variables that we use in the utilization of dbscan, which is the epsilon or the, or the radius of the circle and the minimum number of points to form a cluster. So let's say we're going to use a radius of circle or the epsilon value of 0 0.02 and the minimum number of points to form a cluster as 10 points. Then through the use of the function called cluster dbscan, we will return labels of different clusters generated. And when we receive a label of minus one, we will consider that noise because that's what Open3D's dbscan uh, algorithm does. We notice that in the code, we use Verbosity Context Manager, which is basically what Open3D uses as a context manager that allows us to control the verbosity level of Open3D's output messages within a specific code block. And in this case, it's set to debug. Then we call the cluster db scan to be used on a point cloud data, on our point cloud data, which is PLY. And then we specify the epsilon values of 0 0.02 and the minimum number of points as 10. And we visualize that using matplotlib's color map get cmap, where the color map is generated from the tab 20 color map in matplotlib which maps the label values to RGB colors. Points that have a negative label, as we've mentioned above, which can be considered noise, are assigned a zero color value. And the result? A point cloud data segmented into 10 clusters and visualized with different colors. In the next video, we'll be looking at registration of point cloud data and the different methodologies out there, and we will be focusing most specifically on iterative closest point and looking at global and local registration methods. Stay tuned for the next video, and thank you for watching.